We have strippers on billboards, ads for dispensaries, and a bar on almost every other corner. So at first glance, Vegas doesn't always advertise itself as family friendly. But we live here and we know better. So today on CityCast Las Vegas, I'm joined by Amber Sampson, a reporter with the Las Vegas Weekly. And she's going to talk to us about all ages, family friendly fun in Vegas. It's Tuesday, June 20th. I'm Vogue Robinson, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Amber, welcome to CityCast Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Vogue. I'm very excited to be here. Heck yeah. So I want to talk to you about kind of growing up in this city because I know lots of folks who moved here as an adult, but you were a kid and a teenager here. So can you tell me, like, what did you do for fun? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, I have to say that people definitely when they probably move here to Las Vegas, they just assume there's nothing for kids to do here. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I actually spent a lot of time, surprisingly, on the Strip with my family. Really? Uh, so I came here, yeah, I came here in the 90s. So it was the golden age, I like to say, of hotel themes. So we had Treasure Island. It had a pirate ship. Circus Circus leaned very heavily into their carnival themes. Obviously, Caesar's Palace was one of my favorites for the the Greek themes and all that stuff and the mm. crazy statues. I like the I columns. I remember all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was a lot of fun over there. I will say that when I was a kid, one of my favorite local places to go was Crystal Palace Skating Rink. So oh, okay. it's now known as, you know, Floyd Mayweather's Skate Rock City. But back in the day, that used to be the spot to go as a kid after school on Friday. (laughs) So let's talk about the all ages fun that can be had here in Vegas this summer. Like what are some of the upcoming family friendly events that people should like put on their calendars? Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's a lot of awesome stuff coming out. I think the one I have to number one plug is a super summer theater. Oh yeah. If you know, you know, um, (laughs) It's kind of like a long-standing Las Vegas tradition, I would say, at this point. It happens at Spring Mountain Ranch um, State Park, which is about, I'd say, 30-ish minutes away from the city. Mm -hmm. And it is gorgeous up there, first of all. It's a beautiful place to sightsee, get into some nature, see, you know, the stars. But also, at the same time, they have an amazing, amazing lineup of different plays and musicals that go on there. So in previous seasons, they've had Matilda, they've had Sister Act, but this season, I believe they're going to have Cinderella, which was- Cinderella! Yes, The Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella, which, you know, I know it. I know the songs because of like the Brandy Whitney Houston version, Uh, Uh but then I watched the other versions too. So I'm just like, I am ready to sing in my own little corner, my own little chair. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to be- Rather than singing in your corner, you're going to be singing on the grass, the nice, cool, dewy grass next to your picnic basket and your blanket. Um, There's going to be something rotten starting July 19th and also um, Kinky Boots, which is going to kick up in August. So it's going to be a really good season Uh, and tickets are super cheap. It's like 20 bucks to get you started. If you want to bring a chair or something, that's a little bit extra, but it's honestly worth it. All right. So that's number one. What's number two? We're going to get into some music, Vogue. Yeah. So we've got a big show actually coming up, a big local show coming up at Ferguson's downtown on June 24th. We have the psych rock local band Hunter's Briefcase is going to be there along Mm -hmm. with the punk punk trio Pure Sport and a modern rock band known as White Noise and also kind of more of, of a jam fish style band known as Post NC. All of those bands are great up and coming bands in the local scene. They've been on plenty of bills around town. They've played, some of them have played at Life is Beautiful before. They're awesome bands. 
And I would highly recommend that, especially for the older crowd of like teens, but also maybe they want to bring their parents along with them. I would definitely recommend that show. It's going to be it's going to be a great bill, very good music. If you've ever had any doubts about what kind of local music is out here in the scene, that is the place to go find out. It's a great mixture of bands, a great mixture of artists, and they're all incredibly talented. And also the space is awesome. Ferguson's, again, open air venue, under the stars. You're getting it's that It's basically Vegas' is like, uh, it's like our secret garden amphitheater venue. Because yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely, got all the... Absolutely, absolutely. It's got a bunch of like all those flowers, all the cute little shops. Yes. And then you go in and it slopes down. And then at the bottom, it's like the pool at the bottom of it is Mothership Coffee. And yes. yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the most family-friendly locations downtown. And like, even I, like I get around there and I'm like, should I be frolicking? I think I should be <laughs> frolicking. <laughs> um, so yes, what is the date for that at Ferguson's? That's June 24th. June 24th. And some of those are 18 and up. So not yes, everybody this is an all can ages go. show. This is oh, an so all that ages one is. show, actually. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Duh. So um, one of the bands on the lineup, uh, Pure Sport, they're an amazing band. And they are pretty rowdy, but they are very known for having all age shows that are safe. And anyone can go to them. And it's just a good old, you know, time. It's just a fun time, but also a safe time. So the other thing that's going to be at the Gather House, which is right next door to Ferguson's, is the Future Makers Summer Camp. Super cool. They're going to do painting and drawing. So it's lit in June and then it goes into July as well with engineering robotics and design like whoever created this clearly loves children and crafting because it's <laughs> it's all there i want to go to this summer camp so it's june 5th is when it starts and then it goes until august 4th and multiple themes it goes from 10 a.m to 2 p.m at the gather house and so you can do either 60 bucks for per day 250 per week or 800 per month so if you got the time and the money that might be a cool thing to send your kiddo to So what else you got on your list? Oh, man. Well, while we're on the theme of music, Vogue, I would definitely want to just shout out Downtown Rock's uh, Fremont Street Experience concert series. Okay. First of all, there are dozens of bands on this lineup (laughs) throughout the summer, including the All-American Rejects, Taking Back Sunday, Young the Giant, Neon Trees, Dashboard Confessional, and it's free. When do you ever hear that? (laughs) <laughs> right. Very rarely. It it almost doesn't even sound real. It's, it's like, is this Vegas's version of a block party? That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, it it's is. hard. It's it's hard to find a concert that's free, but also a concert that is this expansive with a lineup and it's free. I think this is one of the best, most affordable ways to take your whole family to a concert without really having to pay a cent. Then you're also downtown. So then you can go to a couple of other places while you're down there. Mm-hmm. My personal favorite on the Fremont Street experience is Project Barbecue, huh. which is, a, yeah, it's a barbecue um, food truck that's basically built into the side of Circa. They have some of the best cool. barbecue pulled pork. Delicious. I have not been there, but what I love on Fremont Street is actually the toy store. There's like a yes. vintage knickknack, knickknack paddywhack toy store uh, mm-hmm. where they have like Lego and a bunch of other like... I don't even know. You just have to go inside (laughs) to fully take it in. But there is a toy store on Fremont Street. The place is called the Vegas Toy Shack. So for the child in you. (laughs) I want to get into also some like last minute weekend plans. So if you, it's you and your family, you got your cousins. What's something that's family friendly that doesn't require tickets or advanced planning? Okay. I would say definitely Skate Rock City. There is a general admission fee. I believe it's only like $10 or $15 to get in. But if you bring your own skates, that's all you got to worry about. At Skate Rock City on Tuesdays, there's family night. So you can get the whole crew in with you. They have uh, senior discounts. They have school discounts. If you have your kids and they can show like a photo ID, they get like $5 off of their admission. It's a very affordable way to bring a bunch of people together, especially for, <laughs> you know, your cousins, the whole nine. 
I remember when I was growing up as a kid, that's how we did it. We piled all the cousins into the car and we took them on down to the skating rink. <laughs> so that's one of the best options there. And and this time you might even see Floyd Mayweather skating on by. Right. He's very, he's a very known skater there. He skates with his kids there. So there's always opportunities to see him. I'd say another great area to go to is the City National Arena in Summerlin. It's an ice skating rink, only 10 bucks to get in. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, that's actually where the Golden Knights practice. So it's a pretty cool place. They have open skating there. You just have to make sure you check the calendar. But usually for the most part, the days are open for kids to be able to just go and, and do some skating. Dope. I know there's another skating rink out in Henderson on Water Street. Lifeguard Arena. Yeah. They also have some great open skating there. There's a bar inside of it. So like uh, Mm -hmm. the first time I went in, there's a bar and there's a coffee spot. So I walked all the way through the bar to the far edge of it to meet somebody for coffee. But you can (laughs) get your coffee and like overlook and see everything that's going on on the ice. So if you are me and you can't skate... (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. you can definitely see it from there. And that was kind of cool. I was like, this is amazing. This was a really just pristine facility. Oh, yeah. I'm with you there, Vogue. Like, I'm not an ice skater. I'm just a roller skater. So mm-hmm. it's nice to be able to just see everybody else do their their carving and all of that on the on the ice. Yes, I watched the magic. And what are a few more places people can go where it's like, all right, get in the car. We're going. One other place I would say is Meepleville Board Game Cafe. Oh, this what? Is, yes. So <laughs> this is heart. one of my favorite spots. This is one of my favorite spots, and I have to tell you why. They have over 2,000 board games that you can come in and play, and an insane amount of space. They can hold up to around 100 people in their, their cafe. Nice. There's food. There's drinks. Sometimes they do trivia nights. And all you have to do is pay $10 or $10 nominal fee to get in and you're in. They will not kick you out. You can be there (laughs) all day if you want to playing Battleship, whatever. Catan. You can play all day long. It is pretty amazing. And I will say there's also meetup groups for teens, for young women. There's Dungeons and Dragons tutorial days where they just teach you how to play that game. There's all kinds of, if you have a game that you're like, I really want to learn how to play this, but I have no idea what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. they will teach you. They're very knowledgeable there. And the people are so nice. The staff is so great. And there's always people in there when I'm there. It's packed. Nice. Yeah. It, my spouse and I, we usually go to Shall We Play just to go okay. and like check out all the games. But I'm the goal is to get him to stop buying board games because we have so many. <laughs> <laughs> but like it was something kind of the pandemic stole away from us was like that joy of playing it with all our friends and having the big game night. So coming back you into it. You can never and- have enough. And that's how people make friends, too. I feel like especially with like the younger people. It's a great place to go that's, you know, safe, it's it's well monitored, and it's it's just a, a nice gathering place to just hang out, you know. Mm-hmm. Speaking of our, like that, that middle, I feel like it's, it's purgatory, <laughs> the purgatory <laughs> age in Vegas, the, the gray zone of that 18, that un, really the under 21 crowd. Yeah. I, I always feel so bad for my people who are under 21 because like, oh, the things, what else can our teens and our college students, what can they do without their parents that still, you know, lets them feel a little cool. Um, I would say one thing that jumps out to me is, I mean, for the, like the younger adults who are like 18, you know, they're not necessarily a kid, but they're not necessarily an adult yet. I would definitely recommend some of the emo nights that have been going on at Brooklyn Bowl. There's one coming up on, I believe, June 23rd with Mason Musso from the electric pop band Metro Station. Those emo nights are some of the most fun I've ever had at Brooklyn Bowl, even besides going to a concert. It's just (laughs) great DJing. I had no clue. Everybody's got eyeliner on and (laughs) it's awesome. Okay. So is it just okay? So the DJ is primed. Like what what are some of the things we'll hear and see at Emo Night at Brooklyn Bowl? 
You know what? I feel like you're going to hear some MCR, some My Chemical Romance. Absolutely. You're you're probably going to get a little bit of Taken Back Sunday, a little bit of um, the used, all of the old early aughts, sad boy, sad boy music. <laughs> <laughs> and what's nice, that area is actually one of my favorite areas of the strip uh, across the street. The Horseshoe has this place called Dino Safari. <laughs> <laughs> and I just took my nieces. So it's not for like the 18 to 21 crew. I would say you can take like toddler to mm-hmm. 13-ish, depending on their love of dinosaurs. But it has like the replicas, they, they're full size or not full size, probably. <laughs> it has a bunch <laughs> of replicas of dinosaurs that move their faces and their arms and their teeth and they look pretty realistic. Uh, There's a slide that looks like the Fred Flintstone slide. So like you go up the side of the brontosaurus leg, get to the top of it and then slide down the tail. And I'm mad that my big ass could not go do it (laughs) because I wanted to get on this slide. Um, And then there's like mouths, like there's dinosaur heads on the ground level. So my niece put her face through it and was like, so it looked like she was inside the dinosaur's <laughs> mouth, like behind his teeth. That sounds awesome. It was you know, um, freaking fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you brought up the horseshoe because I feel like they, you know, ever since they became horseshoe, when it when Bally's became horseshoe, they've kind of gotten a lot of cool upgrades. Like another one that I love is their new arcade that they actually open when they open horseshoe. And basically it's this huge, spacious, traditional arcade which really touches my heart because I used to be a big GameWorks fan and GameWorks opened on the strip in like the 90s, but sadly Mm. closed later on. And this is the closest I would say that the strip has gotten again to like a traditional, real old school, like arcade. Like you've got the Dance Dance Revolution. You've got Ski Ball. You've got the big claw thing that comes down and picks a prize out. It's like Chuck E. Cheese, but for adults, but also for kids. I've seen yeah. kids in there. I've seen full grown adults in there. Everybody seems to love it. I love it. So they're definitely bringing back that that traditional classic feel. What are other things you feel like that under 21 age group can do? Another thing that popped out to me, it's more for, again, like the older, you know, 18 year old crowd. But if you're obviously too young to go to a rave, the next best thing is Secret Garden at Area 15, oh, which okay. is for 18 and up. And it's basically almost like a little mini festival with DJs and there's going to be a magical forest theme. So basically you are encouraged to dress up and wear your best frolicking outfit. <laughs> yes. It's going to be... It's going to be very fun. There's over 10 DJs and artists that are going to be there over um, June 30th and July 1st. And the tickets are relatively cheap for going for three days. I think they begin at like $40 and you can get that kind of ravey EDC-esque experience, but also you're still under 21. So I would definitely recommend that for people who want a, a little bit of a nightlife experience, but they can't necessarily go to the club yet. So definitely try that. I love that. Do you think that Vegas needs anything else to become a real like family friendly destination? Mm, That is a good question. I feel like we're covering a lot of ground right now. Mm. We've got the water parks on lock, maybe a few more water parks. Actually, I would like to see that. Um, I mean, I love Wet n Wild. I love Calabunga, but I think I'd want to see something SeaWorld-esque, like that large Hmm. come here. I would love to see something like that. I think I would love to also see more theme parks in the vein of like the Adventure Dome at Circus Circus. That was my childhood, but I would love to see more of those larger things like come out for kids, I think. The roller coasters, all that stuff. I think I would love to see that. Amber, thank you so much for hanging out and being on CityCast Las Vegas. We appreciate you. No, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. This has been really fun. Before you go, a few things you should know. What's going on, David? Well, let me tell you, Vogue. 
The Mosquito Disease Surveillance Program of Southern Nevada, yeah, that's a thing, has found the first West Nile virus-positive mosquitoes of the season. It was near Green Valley South. Familiar now to Clark County residents since first appearing in 2004, West Nile virus has no vaccines or medications for treatment. So what can you do? Well, get rid of mosquito breeding grounds like standing water and try not to get bit. Good luck, y'all. Also, great news for bus commuters. The RTC is installing about 100 shade shelters around bus stops in Las Vegas right in time for the summer heat. Volunteers for the RTC, like me, took temperature and humidity readings from nearly 138,000 spots around the valley to create the heat map that informed where the shade shelters were to be installed. That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you learned about some new spots to go to like I did, then you got to tell your friends, especially if they've got kids. Go ahead and share this episode with three friends and help make their summer even better. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Take care. <laughs>